Welcome once again, the viewers and the followers of the National Drug Authority. My name is Abias, Public Relations Manager, and I'm here to share with you the insights into the NDA works. Those of you who followed us in our first episode, we looked at how NDA regulates uh, herbal medicine. Today, I bring to you inside our, our National Drug Authority laboratory, by the way, which is World Health Organization uh, pre-qualified, ISO certified, and we we'll continue with the discussion we had on herbal medicine, but today we go deeper. We're going to be looking into how National Drug Authority scientifically analyzes uh, all herbal medicines uh, in Uganda to certify and to make sure that these are safe for Ugandan consumption. Thank you, Abdias. I'm uh, Comfort Were. Elisha Hakim, Abdul Hakim Senyange, and um, charged with the testing of herbal medicines at the National Drug Quality Control Laboratory. Hakim, why do we, uh, as National Drug Authority, test herbal medicine? Because uh, the discussion out there is herbal medicine is extracted from plants, have been traditionally used by our forefathers, and you know, to alleviate different symptoms. Why would the NDA you know, concern itself with going into these scientific tests of herbal medicine. NDA is charged with the mandate to ensure that Ugandans have access to safe and uh, efficacious and safe medicines. And these medicines are not only conventional medicines like the paracetamol we take, but also herbal medicines. Now, sometimes we think that herbal medicines are should not they shouldn't be an extra eye on them, but it would be prudent to know that most of the medicines, but a big chunk of the medicines that were traditionally conventional medicines were extracted from plants. Herbal medicines, just like conventional medicines, have an effect on your health. A National Drug Authority, because of the mandate conferred upon her by the National Drug Policy and Authority Act, is supposed to ensure that the Ugandans out there are not harmed by the medicines they take. Whereas there might be uh, a notion, generally people think that herbal medicines are safe, they can actually impart harm. So in that way, National Drug Authority uh, comes in to be the protector of the public by testing these medicines. Without NDA doing this, there is a lacuna. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you so much for that er elaborative introduction on why. Now, I just would like you to quickly take me and our viewers what do you do, uh, you know, uh, at, at this lab? So, um, when the samples are picked from the market, and uh, that is by our inspectorate, uh, directorate, uh, uh, there are various reasons why they have been picked. Uh, those reasons could be maybe they suspect the product is not safe for consumption, they suspect the product is uh, falsified, uh, someone is uh, pretending that they are providing the product that is not actually the right product, so there are very many reasons to stimulate or uh, cause the initiation for the picking of a sample from the market. Yeah, and so when the sample is rich, we bring it to the National Drug Quality Control Laboratory. And here, once we receive it, we give the sample a unique number. That is uh, what we call the quality control number. For this sample, it was two, it is uh, 1047-1920. So this unique number is what is used to identify the sample throughout the testing process. Once we receive it in the unit, once it's been allocated and we receive it in the herbal medicines unit, we now go ahead to initiate the testing process for the sample that has been received. Uh, the duration uh, could vary, but the National Drug Authority has also been um, has put up timelines within which the public can, can, can know, which we call the service delivery timelines. Those timelines are readily available on the National Drug Authority website. But to just give you a peek, the process could vary depending on the complaint. Uh, there are times when uh, we need to develop a method for the product, so that could uh, inquire a lot of uh, scientific interrogation of the constituents in the product. And uh, we need to come up with a method that we know, the analytical method that we know will be in position to tell us that this product would actually be safe for use or this product would be potentially contaminated or someone has spiked this product with a conventional medicine. So after developing that method, we now go ahead 
and uh, validate it. It will be in position to give us results that are accurate and are reliable upon which NBA can uh, form a regulatory decision. Yes. So, um, if we already have the method, the process will definitely be very quick because all we have to do is uh, get the sample, prepare the sample, and then run it on our state-of-the-art instruments. And when we're done with that, we can report the results and then the public can be informed through the respective directory. Quickly give us a snapshot into you've gotten the product, you've coded, mm -hmm. you, you have the methods. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we test this product to the end when we get the results? Okay. So once we receive the product in the unit, uh, we examine the product. We look at uh, several attributes of the product. We start with the labeling, how the product is labeled, and then uh, we do uh, technical assessments of uh, whether the labeling actually meets uh, the standard labeling format that the National Drug Authority has approved. When that is done, we go ahead uh, to determine how we're going to prepare the sample using the analytical method that in most cases we already have, or if we don't have, we go ahead and start the development process. Um, how we prepare the sample will depend on the nature of the sample. Is it a liquid? If it is a liquid, the process is usually straightforward, the sample preparation process. If it is a solid, like this, this is a powder, um, we have to do some weighing of a quantity, and then we do further extraction of that quantity. For the purposes of this uh, uh, show, I will deal with the liquid sample. So when we get the liquid sample, we go ahead and uh, transfer the amount that has been weighed into what we call a volumetric class. The preparation of the sample, we use different solvents. And uh, in here, um, I have a bit, I have a quantity for the purposes of this, uh, that I have to take about two minutes. After doing the sample filtration, that is the sample in here, well filtered sample, um, I'll take about two mils using this world class pipette, it is class A. I will add a solvent, in this case I said this is methanol, and uh, this solvent helps me facilitate the extraction of the active ingredients. This is the solution, so the extraction process is usually non complicated. But if it were a solid, I would have to apply other techniques like sonication or uh, shaking. We have uh, equipment that do the shaking so that I can extract out the active ingredient. Perfect. I'll go ahead and uh, do just a bit of shaking, simple shaking, to ensure that my sample is homogeneous before I can inject it into the machine. Now, it is very important, the sample preparation step that I've just been doing, because the machine where we put this sample to be ready doesn't treat the crude sample. The sample has to be prepared and then run in the instrument. Having been done with the sample prep, I have what we call the vials. And uh, these vials are the final uh, residence for the sample that is going to be analyzed. I transfer just a bit of my sample into the vial, tap it up, and when that is done, I can now transfer the sample into the instrument. The instrument that we have here is called the high performance thin layer chromatograph, and it helps us separate the components in this sample so that we can be in position to tell. We prepare this sample with a standard. So a standard is a known sample. We use that to compare against this. In case we suspect that a product has been adulterated, for instance, we think that maybe someone has had a sildenafil, what most people call Viagra. We have a standard. We have a, a, a sample that we know is sildenafil. So we prepare it and we shall run along. Uh, we run it along the sample that we put here. This is the automatic thin layer sampler, and all it does is pick a bit of the sample using the needles, and uh, after picking that sample, it puts it on a plate. And it's that plate that I will right now transfer into the instrument. This is uh, a plate, 
and on this plate is coated uh, silica. And again, National Drug Authority has done a huge investment to ensure the people of Uganda are protected. On this silica, it's just known as silica, but there is also what we call C18. On it has been added that C18, so that we have a derived uh, plate. And with this plate, we can be in position to do sophisticated separations, as uh, will be seen later. When that is done, we put on the gas onto this instrument, and the instrument will go ahead and uh, do the sampling. This uh, is the software that we use to set up the instrument, and I'll just do a quick demo. I set up my methods, I save it safely, and I can be in position to select what I'm going to use for the analysis. So for this particular one, like you saw, uh, we start off with the visualizer, which is that component, and then we go to the spotter, where you just saw me put the plate, which is that component. I click on it, and then it comes down here, and then I put on the chamber, which is this component, and then I go ahead, uh, after it has been popped, I want to see what is in there. I put this back, and then I finally put what we call the spanner, and after that, I finish setting up my method. So my method is set up, the plate is this, and then I put the samples here, and then it is ready for analysis. When it is ready, I just execute the method. Uh, Hakim, this is you know an interesting journey, uh, starting from how uh, the the sample is prepared into uh, the actual testing, yes. and our you know for our viewers they have to appreciate that we are not going to get the result of our sample yes. today because it takes you know a, such a, uh, a long time for it to go through mm -hmm. each of these machines and every step is necessary. But you know for our viewers we would like to know what do we usually find out. Uh, from the samples, you know, we get into into this unit. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Abias. Again, uh, we get uh, different results. Uh, definitely, we usually don't know what we shall find when we start our testing, and uh, we can only make uh, the confirmation at the end when the results are out. It contains, for instance, this was a sample that we ran, and uh, we found that actually the sample contained what was supposed to be there. But then there are also times when we find things that are a bit dangerous. We find samples have been spiked with the conventional medicines. I gave the example of acidenafil. And uh, that is quite non safe. And that is why people uh, need to buy medicines from entities that have been licensed by the National Drug Authority. Thank you, uh, Hakim, for that detailed uh, show insight into how you know we test uh, herbal medicine into our laboratory and for me the key thing is that the public should buy all these products from licensed uh, pharmacies and drug shops and that's why our teams are present on the ground to make sure that those premises or those outlets that are selling drugs are licensed are following are complying because we don't only license a premise we make sure the product that is there has been authorized by National Drug Authority, being administered or manned by a qualified uh, personnel. And in our next episode, into our NDA reports, we'll be sharing with you what happens after here, after Hakim and the team have released the results. They could be good, but if they are bad, what does the NDA do. Tune in. See you next week in our next episode of NDO Works.